Welcome everyone to our new series, Alignment Oriented Yoga. So my name is Katie, welcome to CF Yogi. And today we're focusing on spinal alignment. So let's come to a, either a nice seated position where our feet are flat on the floor and our seat is on the edge of our chair so we can really feel nice and, and secure and not like we're slouching back into but we're really energetically lifting up as we're seated in the chair. Or we can stand up and we're, we're just focusing on the spinal alignment. So really from the hips up through the crown of the head. So either of these options works fine. So we'll start just by turning our attention to the alignment of our spine and lifting the crown of the head up tall and really thinking tall. So we're making space in our spine. And if you'd like to close the eyes as we bring our attention inward, noticing our breath, Noticing whether we're breathing through the nose or the mouth without judgment. Noticing whether our breath is deep, low into the belly, or is it staying up higher in the chest. And noticing whether the belly is tense or whether it's moving in and out. and intentionally releasing the belly as we inhale, feeling it expand outward. As we exhale, it moves back in. Inhaling, lifting up tall, thinking tall, making space in the spine. Exhaling, feeling the shoulders melt down away from the ears. With each breath, feeling like we're lifting the crown of the head tall. Every exhale, feeling our groundedness, the ground under our feet, the support of the chair under our hips. So that with each breath, we're growing longer. And feeling like every breath is a little deeper and fuller than the last because of all that space that we're creating. And listening to the sounds of the breath. Feeling the rush of air through the nose. On an exhale, creating a little whisper of air on the back of the throat. And this breath is really at the core of our yoga practice. Even though today we're focused on our physical position, our alignment, still keeping this breath at the center of our attention. And remembering that everything we're doing physically in our practice is helping to support this breath. We're well, beginning to add some motion into our practice. And we'll start as we're focusing on the spine today just by moving the top section of the spine, which is the neck, the cervical spine. Exhaling, bringing that chin down, lowering it a little toward the chest. Inhaling it back up into that neutral alignment. Exhaling it down. And inhaling it up, moving in your own pace with your own breath. Two more breaths. On our next inhale, let's look up toward the sky, just very gently, without dropping the head all the way back. 
And then exhale back to that neutral alignment. Inhaling, lifting it up. Exhaling it back to neutral. So this motion is an extension of the spine when we're doing that upward facing, that lift. And let's meet back in neutral. And then we'll move into flexion, which is that forward motion, exhaling the chin toward the chest. Inhaling, lifting up back to that extension through neutral. Exhaling back down. So we're just isolating that top section of the spine, the cervical vertebrae. Meeting back in neutral. So that's one, area, one way that our spine can move, flexion and extension. Another way is with a twist. So we can turn just that cervical part of the neck into our twisting pose. Exhaling, turning the head over one shoulder. Inhaling it back to center. Exhaling opposite side. And inhaling to center. And just flowing with your breath. Noticing how we can isolate that rotation in our neck. Our neck is an inherently mobile part of the body because we need to be move, able to move our head in so many different directions. <clears throat> so in yoga, we want to make sure that we're only moving our spine through one of these directions at a time. So we're either twisting like this, or we're coming back to neutral and then going into an extension where we lift up or flexion, where we look down. And then meeting back in our neutral spine. So our neck is a very mobile area of the spine. So is our waist, that lower back or the lumbar spine. So now we'll work a little bit on our lumbar. So if you're seated, go ahead and just open up the knees a little bit. We'll make some room for the belly. If you're standing, we can just kind of take our hands down toward our knees and we'll find some flexion and extension of that middle area of the body. So exhaling, rounding forward, scooping the belly in. Inhaling, opening it up, sending that heart center forward. Exhaling it forward. Inhaling it up. And flowing at your own pace and you can do the same thing if you're seated. Moving through flexion and extension, this time we're adding that middle part of the body along with the neck. Two more breaths. And meeting back in neutral. And now taking our feet hip width apart so they're right underneath the hips and we have a little micro bend in the knees and we'll start moving into a twist. So in our twist, just like with our neck, which was very mobile, the lumbar is also very mobile. So we'll inhale, lifting up, thinking tall, sweeping our hands overhead, and then exhaling, twisting to the side and really letting that twist come into the waist. Exhaling opposite side, inhaling back up to center. And working on keeping our hips square to the front of the room so we're really just feeling the rotation in the waist. If we're seated, that's a little bit easier because your hips are already planted nice and firm. And flowing with your breath side to side. And meeting with the hands up, tall overhead. Exhaling, sweeping them down. So we've moved our spine in two out of the three directions that it can move in. We have flexion and extension. We have a twist. And then the third direction that we can move our spine is lateral flexion. And that's where we're lifting up, opening up the side of the body so the ribs are lifting away from the hips. And inhaling up to center. Exhaling the opposite side. 
inhaling to center. And we can either just think about lifting that arm to the sky, or if you really like a bend, you can come into that side bend a little bit deeper. Your choice, inhaling into alignment, exhaling as we come into a stretch. And again, you can do this either seated or standing. And meeting back in the center. Taking our hands together, exhaling them to heart center, and setting an intention for our practice today. Choosing just one word, one intention to hold in our mind we'd like to experience on our mat today. Maybe it's strength, comfort, adaptability. Whatever your word is that brought you to your mat today. I'm letting go of expectation, letting go of judgment, Letting go of competition. Finding our own unique practice on our mat or our chair today. And letting go. <clears throat> Let's roll those shoulders down a bit and away from the ears a couple of times. And re-establishing that nice, long, tall spine. And then we'll move into some standing postures. So if you've been seated, but you're able to uh, work a little bit harder for a minute, uh, we're going to start doing some, um, some heat building exercises that are going to make us more able to enjoy those deep flexibility uh, postures later. So I like to use a block to just help bring the floor up in some of our postures. Uh, you can also use something like a sturdy water bottle. It's really just a way to bring the floor up so that we don't have to feel like we have to reach all the way to the floor, especially as we're focused on alignment today. Uh, this is a great option to have. So I'm going to leave my block at the top of my mat. And we'll focus a little bit just on our standing posture for a moment. So we can change the alignment of our spine by the tilt that we put into our pelvis. So let's just see what happens if we were to tilt our pelvis so that if it were a bowl of water, some water would be spilling out of the front of it. And then see how that kind of puts a, an interesting curve into our low back. Um, and this is why we don't necessarily want to do this every day. You know, you don't necessarily want to teach the booty as we're just walking around because that's uh, bringing our spine out of that neutral alignment. So let's come back, bring that pelvis to neutral. And then we can just experiment what happens if we tilt it the other way, if we bring those hips a little too far forward. And then again, this makes some really uh, interesting, unnatural curves come into the spine. So we can just kind of shift forward and back and see where that middle point is where the crown of the head is reaching at its tallest to the sky. You can even just kind of close your eyes and feel where that center is based on how high you feel like your head is off the ground. And then reaching our fingers down toward the floor and pressing down into the corners of the feet. So really pressing down into the heels and the balls of the feet, but leaving a little micro bend in the knee so that we're not locking out those knee joints. And then inhaling, circle sweeping up. Oh gosh, I'm too close to the wall. <laughs> Exhaling hands through heart center. Hang on, I'm gonna move my mat out so I can circle my arms all the way. Inhaling, circle sweeping up. Exhaling hands through heart center. Just practicing our thinking tall, lifting the crown of the head to the sky as we press down into the feet. And next time we lift our hands up to the sky, on our exhale, we'll put a bend in the knees and hinge at the hips 
stopping halfway down. And this is where the block can come in really handy. So we're taking our hands down to the block and we're not really um, dumping a lot of weight into the hands. It's more just like a signal to let us know that we're at that neutral spine position. The crown of the head is lifting to the front of the room. The sits bones are starting to lift up and back. Maybe we're starting to feel some stretch in the hamstrings. <sighs> Monkey pose. And then bending the knees and folding down to a forward fold. Maybe the hands will come down to the floor. Our first forward fold of the day, we can keep a nice deep bend in the knees, letting the belly actually rest on the upper thighs and letting the head hang heavy, loose and relaxed. It can twist, yes and no. Gonna do flexion and extension up and down. And then inhaling back up to monkey. Lifting the crown of the head to the front of the room. Maybe straightening the legs a little bit so we can start to feel some stretch. Maybe even lifting the toes off of the mat. And then bending the knees, sitting the hips back like we're going to sit into a chair. Inhaling, circle sweeping up. And exhaling back to mountain. So we'll move into a chair flow and I love chair flows because it's a really good way to build up some heat in the low body and also focus on our spinal alignment. So to sink into our chair, taking our hands to heart center and then sitting those hips back like we're just going to tap our bum on a chair and then come back up. So we'll reach out. Our weight is in our heels so our toes can actually wiggle up away from the mat. Inhaling back to mountain. Exhaling, sinking into chair, inhaling, coming up. And one of the things that we want to avoid in our chair is rounding the shoulders down. That's that uh, upper back curve we were talking about, uh, that kyphosis curve. And we want to elongate, lifting the crown of the head up so that we can really just be working our low body. Inhaling back up, exhaling to chair, Inhaling to mountain. Flowing at your own pace of your breath. So my breath feels nice and deep today, which is why I'm moving pretty slowly. Your breath might be maybe a little bit faster. So you feel free to take multiple breaths. If you need to, um, you know, make two or three breaths for one motion, that's totally okay. Two more breaths. And then we'll work into our chair pose. This time we'll hold it a little bit longer, really working on that strengthening, pressing down into the feet and feeling the sit bones just kind of lift up ever so slightly so that we're really engaging. And inhaling back up to mountain. Nice job. Let's shake it out a little bit. So we're going to use our block for our next flow. If you haven't gotten a block yet, or if you don't have one, you can also um, get a chair and just kind of take a, a spot where you can set your hands in front of you. So we'll inhale up. Exhale, swan diving forward fold, hinging at the hips. And then taking our hands up to monkey for that neutral spine posture. So we've got a nice crease right here in our hip. We can even think about lifting the sits bones up and back, starting to lengthen the backs of the legs, the hamstrings, the calves. And then we'll move into a spinal twist from this bent position. So this is why we need to start with our neutral spine. So we'll take the right hand to the block and inhaling, taking that left hand to the hip. So we start to put that little twist in the lumbar spine. Exhaling it back to center. Inhaling the opposite side up. Exhaling to center. Flowing with your breath at your own pace. And just noticing that twist that we're putting into our chest, our low back.
Now as an option, if you'd like a little bit more stretch, we can float our arms up to the sky. And just noticing how that feels in our shoulders. You feel like they don't really want to open up that much? Then we can take the hand back to the hip and we can do a little shoulder roll. So we can take that hand to the hip and just roll that shoulder, kind of slide it back and down. And that's tucking the scapula, the shoulder blade in toward the spine, making some more room for you to reach up to the sky. So we can either just practice those shoulder rolls or maybe you find that after you do a couple, that reach comes a lot more naturally. Just moving through your flow, however it works for your body, maybe you need to loosen the shoulder on one side, then maybe the other. And bringing the hands back to the block, taking a few breaths and lifting the crown of the head to the front of the room. And then bending the knees, forward fold. Maybe the hands will come further down to the mat. Maybe you would like to let the head hang heavy, loose and relaxed. And inhaling back to monkey. Exhaling, sitting those hips back into our chair position. Nice strong pressing down into the feet and then inhaling, circling up to mountain. and meeting back in our mountain pose. Let's move that block aside and we'll come down to the mat, exhaling through that forward fold, coming down onto all fours. Now this is where we just need to uh, think about whether we should be doing any upper body weight bearing today. If that's uh, not a good idea for you because of a pick line, we're just going to go ahead and uh, take a break, maybe sink back into our child's pose. Just kind of an, enjoy some stretch and release for a moment. If you don't have those concerns, we're going to work on our, uh, on our core with a spinal balance. So we're keeping our neutral spine, crown of the head lifting toward the front of the room. And then we'll press back into those left toes. Like we're gonna make some, some stretch up the back of the leg the more we reach the heel to the back of the room. And then once we've engaged all the way through the core, floating that foot off of the mat. And the opposite hand can either float up and reach forward like we're gonna shake someone's hand, or it can reach down toward the foot. But we're building our core stability that's really important for realigning and strengthening our spine. And today we're working on holding our postures a little bit longer so we can really focus on strengthening. Coming out of whenever you need to, but let's see if we can make it for maybe two or three more breaths. and then setting it down. Let's take a break in our child's pose. And then coming back up for our spinal balance. <clears throat> and an option we can have when we're in this all fours position is if we are caring for our wrists or shoulders, we can use fists for wrists. We can make a fist pressing that down into the mat. <clears throat> but we want to make sure that when we're in this tabletop posture that we're stacking our joints. So our hands are underneath our shoulders, our knees are underneath our hips, and that's going to be the easiest on our joints. So let's try a spinal balance on the opposite side, taking that right foot back, pressing into the toes, reaching the heel back, and feeling that engagement come all the way up into the core. When we feel nice and stable, we can float the foot off of the floor, like we're putting that footprint on the back wall, reaching, reaching that foot back, lengthening, and then option to float the opposite hand up. Either reaching it forward or down, same direction as the foot. Either way, we're strengthening our core, our back and our abdominals. Let's 
Let's see if I can make it two or three more breaths. And setting it down. Nice job sinking the hips back. Taking a moment to relax in our child's pose. We can either use our stacked fists underneath our head. If you have a mat you know is clean or a towel, you can let the head rest right down on that. Taking a moment to just appreciate our breath and bring our focus back to that intention that we set at the beginning of our practice. And then coming back to our cat and cow. So we'll start from our tabletop again, stacking our joints. And now we can really enjoy that flexion and extension of the spine. On our exhale, scooping the belly in, shoulder blades sliding apart for cat. Inhaling to cow, lifting the tailbone, sending that heart center forward. Exhaling to your cat and inhaling to your cow, moving at your own pace. Maybe it's going to be nice and slow. Maybe it's a little faster. So one of the important things about our alignment practice is just knowing, understanding when our spine is in its various ways that it can move. So this is our flexion and extension. And meeting back in our neutral spine posture. And we'll move into lateral flexion in this position. So we'll bend to the side. Maybe looking over the shoulder down to the foot. Inhaling, coming back to center. Exhaling, opposite side. Inhaling to center. So we're really making some room in the side of the body. And meeting back in the center. Shifting back to that child's pose. And another option we have for resting posture instead of child is puppy pose, where we're a little bit further forward. So the hips are more like over the knees, and then we can really sink the chest down. And this could be a nice release on the low back. So either your puppy or your child's pose. And shifting back. Coming back up to all fours one more time. This time we're going to move through a cat and cow, but we're really going to focus on the thoracic spine. That's that part of the spine at the upper back that holds the rib cage in place. And we'll focus like this is where our cat and cow are really starting from. So we'll start in our cat pose, feeling the shoulder blades slide apart and then scooping the belly in tucking the head, coming back to neutral, and then we'll let the shoulder blades come together, kind of dropping the chest, and then pressing down into the hands as we float the crown of the head to the sky, and back to neutral. So exhaling to cat, really feeling like it's centered in the chest first, and then inhaling to cow. Just flowing a few times with your breath. And just noticing the difference that you feel in your cat and cow. Do you feel like you have a bit more degree of uh, flexibility when we start from the chest? And meaning back in neutral. And coming to a seated position, bringing our feet to the front of the mat. And taking our hands with our thighs rolling down to the mat one vertebrae at a time and bringing our knees to chest and a hug. So we've got a pretty neutral spine when we're down here on the mat. Let's just take our hands to our knees for a moment and just open up the hips, bring them back in, making some knee circles. And then bringing those knees back to center just gently rocking from side to side, giving ourselves a little bit of a massage on the sacrum on the low back.
And then if you have a block, we can place that block between the knees as we move into our, our low bridge. So we'll really squeeze that block into place. And then just finding a little tilt in the pelvis so that it barely starts to float up off of the mat and then letting it rock back down. Inhaling, lifting just that little pelvic tilt, exhaling it down. So now we're isolating the motion of the bottom part of the spine, right where the lumbar spine meets the sacrum and the pelvis. Maybe you'd like to come a little bit higher. Taking another vertebrae at a time up off of the mat with each breath. And when you're ready, inhaling, lifting it up, finding a bridge and holding this position for a few breaths. So we can watch the belly actually rise and fall with the breath as we're sending it low down into the belly. Our shoulders are relaxed, our neck is relaxed. Pressing down into the feet as we lift the hips. And exhaling, rolling down. Moving it into a little bit of a flow, inhaling, lifting up. Exhaling down. So just like we did extension of our neck when we were first starting, now we're doing extension of our low back, our lumbar spine. Two more breaths. And setting it down, bringing our knees to a chest. We can take that block out and set it aside. And this time rolling our knees in a big circle, massaging the sacrum against the mat. And the opposite direction. bringing it back to center. And then we'll just find a gentle twist. We'll take our feet out about mat width apart so they're a little bit wider than our hips and take our arms out like the letter T. And on an exhale, just lowering the knees down to one side. Inhaling them to center. Exhaling to the other side. And inhaling to center. So we're finding a little bit of a spinal twist that's coupled with an opportunity to stretch out the hips. If you'd like to add some, twi for, some twist for the neck, the upper part of the spine, you can turn the gaze over the opposite hand, making it a full body twist. And then meeting back on the back, wrapping the arms around the knees and a hug, and rolling onto one side in fetal posture, using arm strength to push back up to seated. Finding our way to all fours, and tucking the toes, lifting the hips to downward facing dog. Downward facing dog, we're really lengthening our spine by lifting the hips up toward the sky and pressing down into the hands. So just like we were thinking tall in our mountain pose, now we're thinking long in our downward facing dog. And our spine is doing the same thing with that lengthening, creating space between all the vertebrae. We can pedal our heels one at a time. And then looking up toward the hands, walking up to forward fold. <sighs> 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 
Inhaling to monkey, halfway up. Sitting the hips back. Inhaling, circle, sweeping up to mountain. Thinking tall, lifting the crown of the head to the sky. Now we'll move into some more strength postures. We're going to move into our warriors. And we're going to start with our warrior one. So taking our hands to our hips, rooting the weight into the left foot, and reaching back with the right, letting it take a big step back. And wherever it lands is okay. Just finding an angle so that that heel can plant into the mat and start to stretch out the hamstring. So keeping our neutral spine, thinking tall, lifting crown of the head to the sky as we press down into the feet. So we're really stretching the body, working it in two directions from the floor to the sky. Now our arms can either stay down at our hips, we can reach them up to the sky, or for caring for shoulders or maybe have a pick line, we can take a cactus arms so that the, the arms are at a 90 degree bend in the elbows. And we'll just work on holding our warrior today for a few breaths, lifting the crown of the head up, feeling like every breath we're growing taller. As we press into the feet, we can start to feel how the muscles are engaging in our thighs and really lifting that belly button up and in, engaging that pelvic floor, lifting in. We'll, ex we'll explain the pelvic floor and root lock in another class this month. Two more breaths, hanging in there. And then we'll give ourselves a little bit of a different kind of feel with warrior two. Opening up the body to the side of the room. That front foot is exactly where it was before, but that back foot is now pointing toward the sidewall. So we can really feel like we're growing the body wide in two different directions as the hands reach front and back. So we're sending energy out through those fingertips to the front and back of the room and down into the feet. And as we press down into the feet, you can feel how everything is engaging and lifting to hold us steady. Turning the gaze over that front hand. Finding that twist in the neck. Nice and strong, good job. Two more breaths. And then cartwheeling the hands down to frame that front foot. Stepping the back foot to meet the front. Finding a forward fold. Maybe you'd like to deepen your fold a little bit. An option was ragdoll, taking elbows in opposite hands, feeling the head pull down toward the floor. The head can shake. Yes and no. And releasing the hands, inhaling to monkey, halfway up. <sighs> Lifting those sits bones high. Reaching the crown of the head to the front of the room. Shoulders are down, away from the ears. And sitting the hips back, inhaling to mountain. <sighs> Exhaling hands through heart center. And we'll do that same sequence on the opposite side. <sighs> Taking our hands to our hips. Big step back with the left foot to warrior one. Reaching it back. Planting the feet. Pressing down into those feet like we're going to tear the mat in two with our feet. So we're engaging all those low body muscles as we press, press, press down into the mat. And then lifting, moving the other direction up, tall to the sky. So it's really a full body activity. Fingertips through the soles of your feet.
Listening to that breath, remembering that intention you set at the beginning of your practice today. Feeling stronger with each breath. Two more, you got it. And then opening up to warrior two, pivoting that back foot so that it points to the side of the room. That front knee is still pointing right over those toes to the front of the room, reaching the hands out and pressing down into the feet as the crown of the head lifts to the sky and the fingertips reach actively toward the front and back of the room. Whole body activity. You can look back and see where that arm is pointed and then turn that gaze back toward the front with that twist in the neck. Nice and strong, powerful warrior two. Two more breaths, you got it. And cartwheeling hands down. Coming down to the mat, you can come through all fours and then sink back to our child's pose. <coughs> and then we'll make our way onto our bellies. And one of my favorite uh, strengthening poses that counteracts that kyphosis that can ha happen in the upper back is a locust pose. It's a really great uh, back bend that's also strengthening the core at the same time. So lifting the shoulders up off of the mat and reaching the hands like they're sending all this energy right out the same direction as the feet. And then option to float the feet off of the mat. So we're really creating some nice engagement, strengthening the back. Now it might be tricky to breathe. So we can take a break, come back into our child's pose. And then we'll come to one more locust. We'll get back down to our belly. One more time, taking the hands back behind us and really lifting those shoulders so we can feel like we're sliding the shoulder blades together. <sighs> Option to float the feet up. An active back bend. And I actually have some rock in my body because I'm sending my breath down in deep into the belly. And taking hands back underneath us, coming back to child's pose. And making your way back to forward fold, you can either just step the feet toward the hands or maybe you'd like to take a down dog. Making your way back to forward fold. Inhaling to monkey, exhaling, sitting the hips back, inhaling, circle sweeping up to mountain. Hands through heart center to the sides. All right, good work, you guys. We were doing a lot of strengthening as we were actively pressing down into the feet because we're engaging all of those muscles uh, throughout the core. The erector spinae are doing all that lifting through the spine. Good job. So we'll move into a standing balance next. If you prefer to have a chair next to you or, or a wall, just look around and make sure that you feel comfortable, secure, um, taking a, a bit of a balance. So we'll do a tree pose today. And I love tree because it really activates all of those muscles that are doing exactly what we talked about with that lifting tall to the sky, just like trees. So we'll root our weight into one foot and then opening up the other leg to a kickstand and making sure we've got a little bit of a micro bend in the knee. And then if we're lazy with our tree, our hip kind of cocks to the side. We wanna make sure that we're really focusing on our, on our alignment and we can fix that by pressing down into the foot as we lift the crown of the head to the sky. 
So if we're thinking tall, if we're thinking long, that alignment is going to come pretty naturally. So taking that kickstand, bringing our hands to heart center, and then as you feel ready, letting that foot float to the low leg. Maybe it will even come above the knee to the upper thigh. And in our tree pose today, really thinking about pressing down into the foot as we let the heart center and the crown of the head lift. <clears throat> now option, if you really want to let your tree go tall, maybe the hands will lift up to the sky. And bringing it back down, setting it back in mountain pose, shaking it out. Maybe you'd like to take a water break. And when you're ready, we'll shift the weight onto the other side. So we'll root the weight into the other foot, make our little kickstand. Notice if our hip is cocking out to the side that we're really pressing down into the foot, Lifting the crown of the head tall. Taking our hands to heart center. And as we feel ready, floating the foot up to the low leg. Maybe above the knee to the upper thigh. And remembering that intention we set in our practice. How can we experience that in our tree pose today? Option to let the fingertips grow up to the sky. Nice long tree, fingertips down through the sole of the foot. Creating space in the body in between every vertebrae. Coming out of it whenever you're ready. meeting back in mountain, shaking it out. Now, before we move down to the mat, I want to give an opportunity for you to get some props. Uh, we'll be doing some passive back bend so that we can really let the front side of the body stretch out. So a couple different things that we can do. If you have a yoga wheel, uh, this is a great option where we can start to stretch out the back. Um, a block is really nice and sturdy. And then if you don't have either of those things, um, just a nice sturdy pillow will, will work. I like something that's a little bit narrower, um, but really anything where you feel nice and supported will work. <coughs> so we'll come down to the mat and we're gonna do the rest of our practice on our mat today. So for those of you who are uh, getting a little tired of all the strength building, this is our chance to really start letting it go. So coming down to all fours. And back to our seat. And we'll do a seated fold first. So our seated fold, I really like to take a block and place it between the feet or anything solid like a big sturdy water bottle where you can really just kind of squeeze those feet together. Because as we're uh, working on our spinal alignment today, I really want to be able to focus on, on just kind of the, the basic seated staff pose that we're in right now as our foundational pose. And we can just hold this pose and it's still giving us a lot of work for our upper back to strengthen. So we'll inhale, lifting the crown of the head up. Exhale, rolling those shoulders down and feeling how the shoulder blades are squeezing together toward the spine. And this is an active seated staff pose. So even though it looks like we're just sitting, we're engaging the whole body by squeezing those feet in, pressing the thighs down, and then lifting the crown of the head to the sky. And now let's take a break. Let's let it go and we'll move into a seated fold. In our seated fold, we wanna make sure we're using that same hip hinge that we did when we were standing. So we'll inhale up, exhale, hinging forward. So if our thumbs are in that little crease between our hip and thigh, that's deepening. And then we'll take our hands down, 
And we can use our sinking style breath to deepen the pose. So we'll inhale, lifting the crown of the head up. Exhale, deepen that hinge. Walk the hands down, repeating that with each breath until we find an edge where we'd like to stay for a while. <clears throat> so the last thing that we move is that uh, cervical spine taking the chin down toward the chest. So we're really starting with that hip hinge first and only the last step is to add that spinal flexion. Taking a chance to just let it go. Maybe after a few breaths, if you feel like you want to try going a little bit deeper. Again, working through sinking breaths, inhaling, lifting and lengthening. Exhaling, hinging deeper, walking the hands down. And as we start to round our back, taking that last step of bringing the chin down to the chest, that's where we really start to feel some stretch coming into the back side of the body, anywhere that we have tension. So it could be in the calves, the gastrocnemius, through the glutes, through the back or the neck. And when you're ready to come out of the posture, be really mindful to undo those motions just like we got into them. So lifting the head first, moving the hands up, inhaling as we lengthen and unhinge. And then we'll remove the block if we've had that between our feet. And we'll move into a, a nice restorative uh, fish pose, which is one of my favorite uh, supported back bends because it opens up the chest as we're doing so much uh, seated, seated uh, coughing and uh, airway clearance and such. It can really feel good to let that open up um, in a more uh, passive kind of way rather than that locust pose where we're really, really working on holding ourselves up. So for our fish, <clears throat> where we can really let go, if we take a pillow or a block and we set it down so that we can lie uh, down on it. And if we center that pillow or support underneath our shoulder blades, so right kind of a little higher than the mid back, that can give us kind of the, the best opening up of the chest. So I'll try it first with a pillow or we can uh, stay up on our elbows and then very gradually letting the body come back. So if we have a smaller prop like a pillow, the crown of the head might really comfortably rest on the, on the mat. And just letting the arms fall open and let the legs relax. Or we can bend the knees if that feels a little better for the low back. Now where I am on my pillow, I can come up to a bridge from here, putting my feet into the mat and lifting the hips up and that might feel good on the low back. And setting it down. And then just to show the difference, so that was with my pillow in a low option. I'll take the block, which is kind of a degree higher, and really focus the block on kind of that upper back area between the shoulder blades, <clears throat> so that as I lie back, the chest can really deepen, opening up into that stretch. 
if this is if this range of motion so it isn't available to you where the crown of the head reaches the floor we can place a pillow or something underneath the head so you don't feel like your uh, neck is overextended I'm bringing our elbows alongside, looking up, bending the knees, lifting ourselves off of that support. And coming down to the mat, bringing our knees to chest in a hug, rolling them in a circle. And then coming into a twist, we'll lower the left leg down to the mat, taking our hands around that right knee. <clears throat> and then as we're focusing on our spinal alignment today, we'll shift the hips over to the right so that when we come into our twist, we can keep our spine nicely aligned, guiding that knee across the body into our twist. We can either keep the head, uh, the gaze up toward the sky, or we can add the twist for the neck by turning the gaze over that right hand. Letting it go, listen to your breath. And unwinding the head back to center. Bringing those knees back in for a hug, shifting the hips back to the midline. And rolling the knees the opposite direction. And then lowering that right foot down to the mat, shifting the hips a little to the left so that we can guide the knee across the body as we shift onto that right hip in our twist. Outstretching the left hand, we can turn the gaze in that direction. Enjoying our full twist. And when you're ready, unwinding, coming back to center. <clears throat> Realigning the hips and knees with a hug. Rolling them in one more big circle. And then taking any final postures that you feel you need to complete your physical practice. Maybe one more bridge pose. <clears throat> Maybe floating the feet up to, to the sky in dead bug. Taking those peace fingers to the big toes and floating them to the sky. Maybe rocking from side to side and happy baby. And when you're ready, finding a comfortable place where we can let go of the work that we've done. If you're comfortable lying down, just finding a relaxed corpse pose where we can let everything go. If you'd prefer to move to a chair or a seated upright position, just finding a place where you're comfortable. But whichever posture you're in, thinking about that spinal alignment, making sure that we're not as we relax coming into a position where we're uh, disrupting those natural curves of the spine. And listening to the whisper of breath on the back of the throat. And 
letting the body relax. Feeling the feet and ankles open, maybe finding some circles for the feet. And then letting them relax. And pressing the legs down a couple of times, engaging and then releasing. Engaging the glutes, lifting the hips and letting them release. Lifting the heart center to the sky, rolling those shoulders down away from the ears. So the shoulder blades are pressing down into the mat and then releasing. Palms turning up, fingers open and then release. And unclenching the jaw, releasing the tongue from the roof of the mouth. Letting the eyes fall heavy in the sockets. Feeling the expression release from the face, melting away tension between the eyebrows and the forehead, the temples scalp. Melting away the physical body as we listen to that breath. Bringing our attention back to the body in the room. Bringing small motions back into the body, wiggling fingers and toes. Rolling the head side to side. Reaching the arms overhead in an east to west stretch. And gathering our knees in a hug. When you're ready, rolling out to one side in fetal posture. Using arm strength to push back up to seated. And finding a comfortable seated position. Bringing our hands to heart center. And pausing for a moment in gratitude for our bodies and for what they do for us today, on and off the mat. Thank you for inviting me to be your yoga guide this morning. 
And the word Namaste means the light in me sees the light in you. My spirit acknowledges your spirit. Namaste.